Hey, what's up guys? Today's video is gonna be a little bit different. There's gonna be zero editing. So bear with me. It's all gonna be coming straight from the heart. Uh, what I wanted to do, I wanted to answer a question on a recent video and that is, what are these things? So before watching this video, I do highly recommend that you watch some of my previous videos that have pad mount transformers on the thumbnails. We released quite a bit in recent months where we changed the pad mount. We had some troubleshooting involving a pad mount. There's one of the videos, I think the title was something like energizing a new customer, a new building, something like that, where we did some testing in the pad mount. And the question did come up a few times as to what these guys are. So I'm going to explain that right now as well as show you guys a little bit of equipment. We got some stuff on the ground here. We've got a few sticks, so let's jump right into it. So we're just at the office. Obviously this pad mount is not hooked up at all. So we're gonna be simulating a few things here, but these here are for parking stands. All of our pad mount transformers come with these welded on. Sometimes they're a little bit closer to the face of it. These ones are pushed out a little bit. Doesn't really matter. But what these parking stands are for is a place to park your high voltage connections. Whenever you have a 200 amp elbow, it's gonna look something like this. And if this is the source, sorry, if this is the feed through side, this is the source side that's feeding into the unit, that feeds through out to these guys and this could take on to take off to another pad mount transformer. So if we wanted to isolate that pad mount transformer using one of these two sticks, which we'll get into in a minute, you can remove that elbow. Once that's removed, this cable is isolated. You still can't work on the cable because it's not grounded. However, the power is now off to this cable, which there's actually no cable in there. You can't just leave that hanging in the pad mount. You have to have a place to park it, which it's not gonna happen like that at all. So let's try and flip the camera around here. Let's see if this works. That should work. All right. So in order to remove that elbow, we can use one of two things. We can use our grab ball. It's got our hook on the end. And you can simply grab onto that elbow and pull it off. Those elbows can take from 50, even up to 200 pounds of force to remove. So you get into a situation where you find yourself with an elbow that's stuck on, and you're gonna use this guy, which we call a thumper. That hook right there hooks into that elbow, just like that. And then you simply turn the stick, and that's gonna grab around the body of the elbow and then you have this weight that probably weighs a good five pounds and you simply hammer that to remove the elbow. This can all be done with one man. I'm gonna have to hold that because there's no wire on it. And you simply hammer that until the elbow comes off and then you are able to park it on the parking stand. So we're gonna backtrack just a little bit here. This obviously doesn't make sense. In order to park it, you're gonna need one of these guys. They don't come standard on the pad mount because it's not often that we do have to remove those elbows and park them. So instead, those guys are welded onto every unit and our trucks carry half a dozen of these and half a dozen of these. This is a double parking stand and single parking stand which we'll get into in just a moment. The parking stands can be installed with a stick. You simply put that into your grab ball and that slides down into that groove. We'll take a closer look here in just a moment. to do any editing. So once that's dropped on with your stick, using your grab ball, tighten this guy up, and that is now secure on there. This guy, that's just basically the cable's isolated. So we pop that off, 
and park it on there. Make sure you can't see that yellow, red, or blue ring, whatever color it is. It takes quite a good bit of force to put that on. That cable is now parked. There's no danger of it getting into something that's energized and you were able to do if you had to measure the cable, for example, to test it, where there's, you can't ground a cable if you're measuring, obviously it'll fail. Now the more common use for these things, let's say the elbow burn up and we had to physically work on the cable, you're gonna use a double parking stand. Same idea, drops on with a hot stick. We're gonna tighten that guy up. You never ever remove these by hand, whether you've got your 20 kV gloves on or not. So we use our stick, we pop that off, and we now park it on the parking stand. The reason there's a second point, it's not for another cable. We have three of these ports, one for each cable. But in order to ground these cables, we're gonna use a ground that looks like this. We've seen grounds in lots of my videos. They usually have duct billing either end. Very important to make sure that they are tested. That goes with the sticks too. You can see this stick is tested, expired October, 2025. And using your grab ball, you will put the duct bill on a ground to be on the grounding bill right here. And let's try to flip this camera around again. You can then use your grab ball, grab this. Using the thumper works quite a bit better even because you can see that's, even when it's fully seated, it's a little bit loose. And standing at the full length back of your stick, you install your ground. This cable is now grounded. So once things are all said and done, we're gonna have all three of these cables on a double parking stand and a separate ground going to each one. We are then now able to work on this cable on the other end of the feed through. So we're gonna back things up again. Before you put a ground on, you gotta check for potential. You gotta check to see if there's voltage. You do not wanna put a ground on this guy if that's still alive. So you have to confirm that 100%. I should also add that this is electrically connected. When that stinger goes in to this double parking stand, it is connected to the other side. That way the ground can successfully ground this cable. But again, to back things up, we have to check for voltage in that. This little cap here, which can be removed with the grab ball, that's a capacitive test point. This is not physically connected to the energized cable inside. There's just basically a little piece of metal, the energized wire going up through the elbow creates a bit of a capacitive coupling onto that. And we grab a potential indicator, which hold that thought and I will grab it. Something like this guy right here, it does have to have the elbow setting. Even though this is a 12 kV system, we're not gonna bring that up to 12 kV. So we would power that on. Again, this is on our grab ball. We put that up to the elbow setting and with that cover removed, you pretty well almost have to touch it. And if this guy goes off, it means there's still voltage in that cable. Using a proximity detector to check for capacitance in the test point of a cable, also not the best practice. If you go according to manufacturer's recommendations, it's actually not recommended that you use a test point to check for voltage before grounding. So how do we do that? Again, while there's no editing, I got a hot to turn it all weekend guys and it's been two weeks since I posted a video. So I do apologize for that. We'll be back on track here very soon. We've got lots of stuff coming up, but it's world. So what we're gonna do, I do highly recommend that you guys check out a video that I posted probably two years ago. I think it was called High Voltage Testing by Sensor Link. Anyways, check that video. It's like 25 minutes long, but I believe it's the last 10 minutes that covers high voltage testing in a pad mount transformer. Basically, what we've got in that video 
there's going to be a cable you can use your grab ball and you bond one end of the the volt stick on a ground could be on the ground bar the bale could be basically anything that's at ground potential and on the other end we've got a great big resistor that fits on our grab ball and at the end of the resistor there's a cap looks something like this and before we install that ground using your hot stick you put the volt stick right on the double parking stand it's going to tell you the voltage difference between this cable and ground now there could be still a capacitive charge in the cable itself so you might at first see i don't know maybe a thousand volts or something that's going to bleed out fairly quickly through through the resistor there is physically a high resistance connection to ground through the volt stick to the ground connection so any capacitive voltage will drain out once you see that there is zero volts you have confirmed 100 percent that there is no voltage in that cable and then you are able to install your ground so the last thing i want to cover when these are exposed you can see from the manufacturer these dust caps that are quite dusty you don't want debris foreign objects getting inside that connection at all in order to not get foreign objects and debris into that connection you don't want to get it inside your elbow and you don't want to get it inside even your parking stands but you cannot have an exposed bushing like that if all you have on the truck is a double parking stand again you can't plug this guy in and leave this guy open so you're gonna to have to use one of these bushing covers these bushing covers there is some semiconductive material in there along with insulating material if that's left isolated like that you could see a little bit of arcing going to ground it's pretty normal however that arcing can start to pit the rubber it's, it's going to cause damage so you have to use this bleeder cable whether you put that on a tap clamp and install it with a stick or you simply use your rubber glove tie it to ground somehow even even the elbow itself that's why this little cable is here this this outer jacket has to be bonded to ground so when you plug this guy in you can see there is a stinger in there there is a probe that is going to energize the inside of this cap you do have to put your bleeder cable on what you want to make sure is you don't use something like this you can see there was no bleeder cable so somebody made one up but look at the dirt in this guy if you have this on your truck you go and plug it in there that's going to leave all kinds of dirt and debris inside that bushing cover that elbow will eventually fail so when you keep these guys on your truck this stuff all comes in bags keep it in a bag keep it clean you don't want to get any dirt and debris in there whatsoever so i'll leave it at that guys um, again excellent question really appreciate that do highly recommend that you watch some of the previous videos just check out the thumbnails in the thumbnails you'll see something like this basically a pad mount transformer and definitely check out the high voltage testing video by sensor link where i go a lot more in depth into that testing so i'm just going to upload this video right from my truck i'm just on break right now i'm going to shut her down i'm going to finish my lunch i'll see you guys all very soon and i appreciate you all watching be safe